My name is Lori Walker and I will be your guide to the Fusion Online Resource Hub where we will talk about community-engaged learning and problem-based learning in your classroom. Why Fusion? Campus Compact and the Davis Educational Foundation have partnered to pool resources together that will benefit your students and communities through hands-on learning experiences that will make an impact and build your students' skills. There are a lot of factors impacting the way that we go about our classroom learning these days. We're in the midst of a global pandemic that can change how and where and when we can gather, sometimes at the last minute. We also have impacts on our civic engagement, like local elections and court decisions that, at least in my case, have an impact on social work practice, sometimes on a weekly basis. And we have social movements that are calling us to higher standards around diversity, equity, and inclusion, looking at our, our country's historic foundations and how those impacts and disparities play out today. We have so much we can work on through our classes. Regardless of what format your classes are designed with, whether you're gathering in person, both with your students in the class and out with community partners, or whether you're teaching online, either in a synchronous or asynchronous way, where people are gathering on Zoom or other platforms at the same time, or whether they're logging into a course module on their own time, not in sync with others. Or the more realistic uh, situation in most of my classes is that we are gathering in a hybrid or high flex manner. My students are in high risk settings, working in uh, hospitals and nursing homes and other settings that mean they have a high level of covert exposures and positive cases. There wasn't a week that went by this semester where I didn't receive one to five emails from students who had to participate in class remotely. So even when we were gathering in person, I often was streaming the content through Zoom to online platforms for students to engage live. The good news is that you can do community and problem-based learning even in the midst of all of these realities. We can create spaces for students to make an impact, understand problems, act together, and shape the socio-political environments that we're all working within. We'll also help you establish community partnerships with community engaged in problem-based learning. For example, next semester, for the first time, I'm teaching an asynchronous small groups and communities class. We have students in tribal colleges and community colleges through our two plus two program across the state in nine locations. I'm teaching the students how to make an impact out in the community in a task group in the class, but redesigning the course in a manner that enables them to pick one of five established community partners. I've learned through the last couple of years of the pandemic that our community organizations often don't have the capacity to return cold emails from students asking for input on community projects. However, when I send an email to people I have eight years of experience in relationships building, they respond immediately, schedule appointments on Zoom with me, and have dreams of many different projects that my students could engage with. Next semester, I have five projects students can choose from. Students can choose to work on a documentary film. They'll be doing some background research to contextualize the story across the state and not just in this local community that's building a communal way of doing foster care. Students can also choose to participate in one of two needs assessments focused on housing and on child welfare reform. I have local community partners that are already working on those things, plan to do a needs assessment, and could use the students' thinking uh, as well as potentially their design on the survey and or going out and collecting those surveys in the community. I also have a local civic engagement agency that wants to partner with us to have students Think about the impact we can have on this with nine different communities across the state. Have students help sign people up for Medicaid and Medicare. And fifth, I have another project with some community partners who are interested in looking at traffic stops and racial profiling across several jurisdictions in one local community. Students can work with a student in our graduate program who is a law enforcement officer in tribal and federal contexts who can help them understand how to respectfully approach local law enforcement, ask for data they're entitled to have uh, access to, and then write a report that's respectful and truthful and calls us to do better in our communities. We have eight different steps that we'll walk you through to help you in our resource hub. 
We'll have you identify your student competencies, self-directed learning and motivation given the platforms that you are working within. We'll have you thinking about equity as well as project management, cultivating community within your classes, re uh, creating reflection opportunities as appropriate with your students and community partners, building assessment into your class, as well as closure and celebration with your community projects. We'll guide you through a course blueprint throughout these three modules. First, we'll have you pick a course, identify the issues to address, identify community partners, match your course design as assigned or as the reality is at that point in time. We'll help you consider community partner contextual factors. For example, if I had reached out to some of these community partners two years ago, they would have told me, no, I don't have the capacity to do that as the pandemic is rolling out. And we're figuring out how to do this on our own and don't necessarily have the emotional capacity to support students in their learning as well. But that's a different reality now. Now they're ready to roll up their sleeves, get to work, and have figured out how to creatively engage in their communities and keep projects moving forward. We'll also have introductory and follow-up communication tips as you're identifying and working with community partners, as well as helping you identify and engage with campus stakeholders. For example, with my documentary film example I gave, I've worked before with our Institutional Review Board on a media release that's been signed off by our university legal office that is common to use in these sorts of settings. But I'll have to double check and say, well, what about if I do this in a class? What if students are the ones out doing this work? What do we need to consider? Can we follow the partnership model of the documentary filmmakers who are experienced and have students work under their current uh, means of gaining consent and working on telling these stories in the community? Or do we have to have our own or merged university process around media releases? Additionally, I have the same questions about HIPAA. There's health protected information with Medicaid and Medicare, and I'm sure my nonprofit partner has thought about how to protect people's confidential information, but I'll have to teach my students how to follow their lead and how to consider the impacts of our involvement as a university campus. All of these are things that you can think through in advance uh, in a fairly efficient manner with the guidance of these platforms and resources and best practices that we'll share with you. We hope that you'll be able to take risks and build these problem-based and community-engaged partnerships into your classes. We can do that now during the, a pandemic. We can do that moving forward uh, throughout all of our classes. This is a joyful, fun, really relevant way of building our classes, and I hope that you'll follow our lead and be creative in creating the design for your classes, your communities, and your, and your students' passions to make a difference in the world.